as you remain standing, we go to page three of our program. Christ, our Redeemer, died on the cross. Died for the sinner, paid all his dues. All who receive him need never fear. Yes, he will pass, we pass over you. Chiefest of sinners, Jesus can save. As he has promised, so will he do. O oh, sinner, hear him. Trust in his word, then he will pass and pass over you. Judgment is coming, all will be there. Who have rejected, who have refused, O oh, sinner, hasten, let Jesus in, then God will pass, will pass over you. Oh, what compassion, O oh, boundless love. Jesus has power. Jesus is true. All who believe are saved from the storm. Oh, it will pass. We pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I pass and pass over you.
continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Chapter 20 And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Chapter 19 In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, 
Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded them. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargedst us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people, and spake unto them. You have just listened to the Bible reading. And we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. In your life, everything will go. The choir, please.
tonight. Let me hear you say breakthrough. 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 Breakthrough in my heart. Breakthrough in my mind. Breakthrough in my spirit. Breakthrough in my soul. Breakthrough in my weakness. Breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God. You are the God of the Breakthrough in my worship. Breakthrough in my praise. Breakthrough when I live the glory.
we are taking it back. Praise the Lord. Testimonies abound of great things God is doing in our midst globally, online, as well as in this Alpha location. Time will fail us, but we just listen to two testimonies now to whet your appetite and to let you know what God did for others, He will do for you. The first testifier, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is doing great things during this program. And we have testimonies here that we are going to share with us to the glory of God. My name is Dr. Dele ogufo -Okon. I'm a family physician. And we have this testimony from this 15-year-old boy here. Let's hear from him. Praise the Lord. My name is Pekulia Chukunti. I'm a born again child by the grace of God. I'm 15 years old. Listen to my testimony. May God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is my son. He's 15 years. Since when I give birth to him, he has been birth waiting. Since he has been birth waiting. Since 15 years now, when we came to the program, uh, Camp Grand, on, on the day that they started the program, when we just read there, he told me that, Mommy, this, today, as I, as I came to this program, I will not go back with this problem again. In short, as I've reached here, the problem is over. I say, Amen. Then after the program, we get, went back home. Yesterday, he woke up. I asked him whether the deep is, he said no. This morning, he woke up again. I checked even his wrapper, everything, he did not bedwet. And before, he would bedwet three times in the night before they would break. But these students, yesterday I wanted to give him the testimony. I said, let me leave it here. Let me see the next day again whether he will bedwet. I said, the Lord, I do is may his name alone be highly exalted. May the Lord increase the grace of our daddy in the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. He yes. has taken his freedom back from bedwetting. It will never happen again. Amen. Let's listen to the next testifier, Sister Rose Fibile. Praise the Lord. Children of God, praise the Lord. I'm Sister Rose Fibile. By the grace of God, I'm born again. I want to thank God and also share this testimony to encourage us as we are coming for this GCK that one day to God we also do your own. Praise the Lord. I discovered that last year, almost a year, which was almost a year or thereabouts, I discovered I was having a pain in my left lower abdomen. I don't know what it is. If I want to climb like a step like this now, I'll be feeling that pain. I dare not just climb like that, otherwise like I will injure myself seriously. So I don't know what it is, and I was afraid to go to the hospital to go and see the doctor because the devil was just ministering different things to me. And again, I discovered that if I want to walk, sometimes my two leg, the two is like want to touch each other as if ah, I don't want to listen to some kind of instruction, so that is it is all that. But I keep believing God. When I attend the GCK, they will say, check yourself after prayer. I will check. It's like the thing is still there. But after during that Bayesa crusades. People were just sharing testimony. And something came to me and said, look at these people. She they have been attending the crusades. They didn't receive their own. But this time now, God have done their own for them. So that as I keep coming, so also one day too, God will also do my own. And after then, I discovered that that pain, I no longer feel it again. The one that I'm, I'm working, sometimes I have to control myself so that people will not, not understand and say, ah, how is this person working like? Everything I've gone since after then till eternity. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the miracle and the miracle will permanent in your life in Jesus' name. 
Everything has gone. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. This looks like you need a microphone to get your voice out to the world. I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. And all your desires and the desires of heaven for you. The Lord fulfill that tonight in Jesus' name. Heaven is loaded to pour something down upon you. The clouds of miracle. The clouds of salvation. And the cloud of healing. The cloud of the supernatural coming from heaven upon your life. Tonight is your night. I will receive. I will possess. I will experience the glorious visitation power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for this hour that heaven is loaded to pour down the blessings and the glory of heaven upon everyone. We we'll pray that tonight, this last day of days, could say GCK in Ghana. We're asking, Lord, all the desires of your people, all the prayers of your people, all the petitions of your people, you will answer immediately tonight in Jesus' name. Joy in every life. Gladness in every life. And a miracle working power of God in every life manifested in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, I need to tell the world, you can see now, God bless you. I need to tell the world how glorious things are happening in Accra, Ghana. God loves you all. And I don't truly really love you, I love you, I love your language. And the Lord is going to bless everyone as you choose what the Lord is presenting to you tonight in Jesus' name. In Joshua chapter 24. Reading from verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. The God of heaven, the God of glory, the God of faithfulness, the God of grace and mercy and love. He had told Abraham, and he said he'll bring his descendants to the land of promise. God wanted everyone to get to that pleasant land, that promised land. The promise came from the perfect Lord of heaven. He wanted them to have glory in their lives, blessings in their lives, and yet he gave man the choice. We would have thought because he's God, and he knows what he wants for us, and he knows the goodness he has promised for us. And he knows what his blessings will do in our lives. We would have thought, we would have said, I've decided whether you like it or not. Promised land, you must get the goodness and the beauty thereof. 
But man is a free moral agent. And he puts the choice in our hand. And he says, choose you this day. This day, your own day. Choose you this day. Whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood. Or the gods of the Amorites, whose land ye dwell in. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The choice is in our hand tonight. That's why I'm bringing the message to you, man's choice of glorious or gloomy day of visitation. Glorious day or gloomy day. Everything is in our hand. And the Lord is saying, whatever you choose, I give to you. Isn't that wonderful? That God doesn't predestinate you to evil. He doesn't mark you down for doom. He said, you cannot go to hell by any other person's choice. He said, you will not suffer by even God's choice. The choice is in your hand. Glorious or gloomy, the choice is yours. Glad or sad, the choice is yours. Happy or unhappy, the choice is yours. Hopeful or hopeless, the choice is yours. A gracious life or a gloomy life, the choice is yours. Healed or diseased, the choice is yours. That's why I'm talking today on God's choice of glorious or gloomy day of visitation. Three things we're looking at. Number one is the glorious day of visitation chosen by the wise. We go through life. What will become? God has his plan. God has his power. God has his goodness, your days for everyone. But what you become is in your hand. He gives you the choice to be wise. The glorious day of visitation chosen by the wise. There are people who are not so wise. We're not talking of book wisdom. We're not talking of intelligence as wisdom. We're not talking of achieving because of wisdom. There are people who throw away their life, their destiny by choice. There are people who neglect and there are people who toss away. There are people who allow Satan and the world to take their lives and take it wherever they want to take it to. There are people that don't allow anybody to come and take their car and just take it anywhere. They're very careful and watchful of their car. 
they are not as watchful over their body, over their soul, over their spirit as they are watchful over their car. The people that are not watchful over their future, over their destiny, as they are very, very watchful over their wife. That wife or that husband, they're always there. And if anything will touch and take, and if they say, never, while I'm here on earth, you cannot touch my husband. They are not as watchful as the of the glory God wants them to have, of the gladness God wants them to have. Anybody can touch that and take the glory and take heaven away. They don't care. They, they are not watchful, but they are watchful over their money. If any amount goes out from that account, and I, how did that come? They will look for every detail, and the bank official will have to account for how did that go out. They are watchful of their money they are not watchful over their eternal destiny number two is the gloomy day of visitation chosen by the wayward Number three is the glorious day of visitation chosen by the willing. If you are willing and obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. Choose you this day. Make a wise choice. You know, somebody says, I will not choose. I'll just, you know, hold my hand. And I will not deliberately choose any way, whether good or bad. I am neutral. My friend, there are only two ways. Only two choices. If you don't choose the good, you have automatically chosen the evil. Here is food. I want you to eat. I will not make any choice. If you don't choose to eat, automatically you have chosen to remain hungry. I am thirsty. Here is good water to drink. Make your choice. Pick a glass of water. Drink. I will not choose anything. Once you don't choose the water, you have chosen your thirst to remain in your thirst. And it is when we make a deliberate decision. We make a deliberate, definite choice. Multitudes in the valley of decision. And you make up your mind and you say, I choose lie. I choose glory. I choose grace. I choose salvation. I choose the mind of God, the plan of God for myself. Then you have on the final day, the glorious, gracious day of visitation chosen by the willing. Look at number one. Number one is the glorious day of visitation chosen by the wise. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 19. Here is God talking to everyone in the world. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I, the God of heaven, have set before you life and death. 
blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. God said, I put before you life and death. I don't want you to die prematurely. I don't want you to die. And I don't want you to die a devilish death. And I don't want you to die. I don't want you to die a damning death forever. But even though I don't want you to die, the choice is in your hand. You see, life, I set that before you. It's yours for the taking. It's yours as you choose. But I also set death before you. I couldn't force Adam and Eve to remain in the beautiful, pleasurable, wonderful garden of Eden. And I cannot force any of his descendants to choose anything. But I want to tell you, I love you. And I put life there. I put death there. Make your choice. It says, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Many times, the choice of the father, the choice of the mother, affects the choice of the children. Daddy is honored. Daddy is respected. His choice, the children think, will be good for them. And if, cho if we choose life as a mother, as a father, the choice will affect your children. If you don't choose life, I am neutral. I can't take a decision. I don't want to take a decision. I will wait and see. That wait and see, that delay will affect your children too. Unfortunately, when you came, when you come later to make the choice, the children already, they are rigid in their choice that they have made. And daddy, mommy is now going to choose Jesus and let him go. We have made our choice with him, with her. Many years ago, those choices you have not made or those choices you are making may affect your children, your followers permanently. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, it says that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. He, God, is thy life. When you choose God, we we'll choose life. He, God, is your life. When we choose God, we we'll choose a happy life, we we'll choose a glad life, we we'll choose a prospered life, and we we'll choose a positive life. If you choose God, you choose life. The opposite, the opposition, the opposer of God is Satan. If you don't choose life, automatically you have, by your decision of not choosing life, you have chosen death. 
If God is alive, Satan is the originator of your death. The people have chosen God. They are picked up and they are taken away. They are isolated from the other people. They are insulated from the other people. Because they have chosen life. And the remnant, the people that remain, they have not chosen God, they have not chosen life, they have not chosen Christ, and they are remaining there. And the other people who have chosen God, who have chosen life, God has removed them, separated them. All the other people remaining, Satan then comes and he says, Since you didn't choose life, you didn't choose God, you have chosen me, come on, follow me. And you cannot resist. And it will destroy that life and he will defame that life he'll defile that life and he will get those lives to follow him to hellfire because they did not choose life who have you chosen We've been a crusade for these days now. That the final day, who are you choosing? Psalm 119, reading from verse 1. In Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. They have chosen the Lord. They will not listen to any other voice. They will not look at any other way. They are blessed. It is a there that will try to tell them this. And they say, please, I have made my choice. Keep your invitation. Idol worshippers will try by their festivals to, to invite them and to touch their lives. They say, please keep your way. I've made my choice. God's life is the choice I have made. Gangs in the world. Occultic gangs in the world. They're trying to do their own kind of evangelism and they're knocking on doors and they're saying, Why don't you come? At school, they invite you. University, they invite you. They say, Look at this gang, please hold your peace. I have made my choice. Life, God is my choice. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him. That's the one they have chosen. And they're seeking him. They've sought him in salvation. They seek him in sanctification. They seek him in Holy Ghost baptism. They seek him in soul winning. They seek him. They just want to touch him and please him every time. And they keep his testimonies that seek him with their whole heart. The whole heart is filled with excitement, the excitement of God. And there's no vacancy in the heart anymore. That will be given to anything evil, anything sinful. They seek him with the whole heart. And then in verse 3, verse 3 says... They also do no iniquity. Because they have chosen the Lord. They have chosen life. And God is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is full of his goodness. And they choose this God. And they choose this life. 
with all their heart, all their soul. And there is no magnet in them that attracts all the mundane things of the world. They do no iniquity. They do not walk in the way of sin or iniquity because their whole hearts have been captured and filled and saturated with the life and the righteousness of God. And they walk, they walk in His ways. That's the choice the Lord is calling on you and everyone to make. So that on the final day, it will be a glorious day of visitation. Because you have chosen like the wise. Look at verse 30 in that Psalm 119, Psalm 30. I have chosen the way of truth. I. The man is announcing to the devil, don't come near, I've made my choice. He's talking to the darkness of this present world. Don't bother me, I have made my choice. It's asking for, it's talking to those who are looking for followers, evil people, gangs, evil uh, agents. They're looking for the people that will come and help them perpetrate their darkness. They said, don't worry about me. I have made my choice. What choice have you made? When did you make the choice? You can make the choice tonight. And then Satan will leave you alone. Sickness will leave you alone. Did you say amen to that one? All the powers of darkness will leave you alone. That man, that woman, the way he talks, the way she talks, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl is not available for Satan for sin anymore. The way he talks, the way he lives, and the way he maintains his conviction. He has made, she has made her choice. I have chosen the way of truth. Error is not welcome here. Falsehood is not welcome here. False prophets not welcome here. And the people that distract people to go in the way of sinfulness, thank you so much, not welcome here. I have chosen the way of truth. The judgments have I laid before me. When you make a choice like that, from uh, the moment you make that choice, goodness and mercy will follow your life. Yeah. Satan will see you and turn the other way. Sickness will not be able to attach itself unto you. Your life will be full of smile and laughter. Joy and gladness because the God of life, the God of righteousness, the God of power you have chosen, He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. Look at number two. Number two, the gloomy day of visitation chosen by the wayward, by the willful. I, I told you, um, you know, God puts the choice before you. Glory finished. Glory in your life. But if you say, I don't know what I will choose. 
And once you don't choose the goodness of God and you don't choose the grace of God and you don't choose the godliness that belongs to God, automatically you have chosen the other thing. And that your life is gloomy will not be the fault of God, it's yourself. That your life is sad and sorrowful will not be the fault of God, it's your choice. That your life is unhappy, distressed, it's not the fault of God, it's yourself. That your life, people are concerned about you, you are concerned about yourself, and life is dreary and weary. It's not the fault of God, it's yourself. He already told you to choose the right way. And you are choosing the wrong way. If you are weeping and sorrowful, who do you blame? If your life is trampled down by the powers of this world, who do you blame? And if if you die eventually and you go to a gloomy habitation over there in eternity, my friend, who do you blame? Your choice determines your stage here in life and your station over there in eternity. In Joel chapter 2 verse 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is near at hand. Look at verse 2. In verse 3 it says, it's a day of darkness. It's coming. It's a day of gloominess. It's coming. A day of clouds. A day of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there has not been ever. The like neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. What, look at what he tells us there. It said, it's a day of darkness, it's a day of clouds, it's a day of gloominess. Joel was not the only one that, you know, tells us that. Sephaniah chapter 1, reading from verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. There is a payday. You might walk for 30 days and then nothing is given at the end of each day. But it's a payday. You might sin every day and the gloom and the darkness and the pressure and the punishment does not come at the end of every day. But it's going to be a payday. You might speak in the face of God. You might blaspheme his name. You might say, if God is there, here I am, knock me dead, and I know you are there. He may not reply you on that day. But there is going to be a payday, and it's going to be a day of darkness. It's going to be a day of gloominess. 
in verse, in verse 14 it says the great day of the Lord is near it is near and he said greatly even the voice of the day of the Lord the mighty man shall cry there bitterly Then he tells us in verse 15, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And then in verse 18, it says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, indignation, and anger. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even his speedy readers of all them that dwell in the land. There's a day of glory. There is a day of gloominess. I just want to remind you that choice is in our hand. And Jesus Christ has paved the way that we can have glory at the end of life. Even in this life in which we live. But the choice is in our hand. In Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? I, I have not repented and I am healed. The goodness of God leads you to repentance. I have not changed anything, corrected anything in my life, and I got married and have children. That's the goodness of God is leading you to repentance. It's saying you're having difficulty making a choice. I want to help you to make a good choice. I heal you. God says I deliver you. God says I bless you. And then you now raise your shoulders. All those people that are saying you must repent, all the drunkenness and all the smoking of weed and all the evil thing, you must repent. Here I am. I've not repented, and yet I have healing, I have deliverance, I have certificate, I have money, I have job. Ah, you miss the point. Are you despising the riches of his goodness and forbearance and love? suffering you don't know the, the goodness of God the blessing of God is leading you to repentance so you make a right choice and you'll say I choose the Lord today I choose the blessing of the Lord today Look at verse 5. In verse 5, but after the hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. But everything he's doing for you, he wants you to understand, is to lead you to make a choice. 
to choose the Lord who is so good, who is so great, who is so marvelous to you. But if you say, look how strong I am. Look how fortunate I am. Look how prospered I am. Look at how strong I am. I'm even stronger than some of those people that say they have repented. Because of that, you're hiding your heart. God is good. God is wonderful. He is my healer. I'm as strong as feet as fitness could be. And because of that, you're hiding your heart. It says the hardness of your heart, the impenitence of your heart will treasure up for you wrath against the day of wrath. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. God is good to us, but he doesn't want us to take him for granted and slap him on the face because after all, he's good and we have not repented and we're not planning to repent. And we, and we who are believers ought to understand the plan of God, the program of God, and the way God works. You're talking to somebody who is a sinner. You're talking to somebody who is a backslider. And the sinner, the backslider, smiles and say, If I tell you my testimony, you will know that God is happy with me. Go away with repentance, with uh, changing, with restoration. I am all right. I don't give up on him. He's not all right. The goodness of God is talking about. The testimony he's talking about. And the increase in his life he's talking about is the goodness of God. God to lead him to repentance but is ignorant. Let's change from our ways. Let's turn from evil. Not allow the smile, the laughter, or the, you know, extra ordinary kind of excitement anybody is manifesting. Don't let that deceive us. Even yourself. Don't say, look at me, I'm all right. I just came for crusade. I don't need healing. I don't need this. I'm blessed all around. All the same. That blessing is coming from God to lead you to repentance and make a choice this glorious day so that finally you will not get to the gloominess of the day of judgment. Number three now. We're looking at the gracious day of visitation chosen by the willing. gracious day. This is still the day of grace. That no matter how far you have gone from the life of God, God says, I'm waiting for you. He came to you. He stood there. He said, you are my creature, calm. You are a sinner, but calm. You looked at him, you went away. He calls again. I'm still standing here. I still want life for you. He shouts like a, a trumpet. He screams like somebody crying aloud. He says, I'm still here. I died for you. I want all your sins to be forgiven. 
I want grace in your life. I am healed. Yes, but I gave that to you so I can use that to invite you and to draw you. I have a job, a good job. Yes, I gave that to you so that that will be a powerful incentive to draw you to me. I'm still here standing and waiting for you. And eventually you come. Tonight you come. You make your choice tonight. You are making your choice tonight. Either you want to live a brief, carefree life, or you want to have a life that is long, unending, and glorious in eternity. The choice is yours tonight. When you make the choice and you come to the Lord and he receives you graciously, what are we going to see in your life? It's like you're saying from now on, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. How ugly I was, how terrible I was. When I was in all those uh, works of the flesh, how destructive I was, how dangerous life was. But now I make my choice and come. Let now the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and purity. As we come to the Lord, before we came, our life was upside down. Our language was dirty. Our dressing was tempting. The things were did and the places were went, impurity showed on our faces, on our lives, on our dressing, on our drinking, on our smoking. Everything was impure. But now that I make my choice, all his wondrous compassion and purity can be seen now. O oh, thou spirit divine, spirit mighty, spirit wonderful, O oh, thou spirit divine, all my nature refined. When we make the right choice, when we come to the Lord and choose the Lord and we choose divine life, then all my nature he refines. I feel happy. I feel glad. I feel glorious because my nature has now been changed by the Lord. Till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. And that's what, what you expect. That's what, what you are bringing to the Lord. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. All his wondrous compassion and purity. O thou spirit divine. All, all, all my nature refined until the beauty, until the glory, until the goodness, until the fullness of the grace of God be found seen in me. You will do it. Your time has come. My time has come. A gracious day. A glad day. A great day. A glorious day. Look at 18 Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. 
the spirit of the lord is upon me our christ our savior our healer our deliverer because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives when you make your choice tonight you'll not be a captive anymore you'll not be broken hearted anymore you'll not be an indigent poor peasant anymore recobbling of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised verse 19 to preach to proclaim to provide the acceptable year of the lord and in verse 20 it says and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him verse 21 and he began to say unto them and he comes to say unto you he comes to say unto you your glorious day has come the gracious day has come for you and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears in your life in your family this is the day the scripture will be fulfilled in your life look at verse 22 and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is not this joseph's son Your language will affect your choice. Is this not Joseph's son? Natural. Is this not the son of God? Supernatural. I see four men and the appearance of the fourth one is like the son of God, God's son. That will bring conviction in the heart of that man, conversion in the life of a man like that. The demons cried out, we know you, who you are. You are the Holy One, the son of God that brings deliverance to that demonized person who you call jesus joseph's son god's son will determine the glory or the gloom in your life he is the son of god and then we come to verse 32 in verse 32 and they were astonished they were amazed they were surprised at his doctrine for his word was with power when you make the choice i am choosing the son of god he brought salvation from heaven he brought the new life eternal life from heaven he brought grace and glory he brought all the provision of heaven and he suffered for us and he took our punishment away at calvary when you know that he is the one the son of god that brings grace and glory you make the right choice and you choose him your life and your eternity will be glorious 
Uh, look, look there at verse 36. In verse 36, and they were all amazed, like you are going to be amazed tonight. The joy that will come to your heart, the assurance that will come to your soul, and the affirmation from heaven that will come inside you there in your personality there. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Congratulations tonight. You have come to the moment of a great choice in your life. You have the chance to have the liberty. He puts life and death before you. He puts goodness and other one, whatever your choice, before you. Tonight, I choose life. Tonight, I choose God. Tonight I choose forgiveness. Tonight I choose freedom. And tonight I choose the final glorious heavenly day. God will have mercy on you. He's been waiting for you. That all your sorrow he'll take away. All your condemnation he'll take away. He could have given it to you, but that's not the plan of God. He doesn't force goodness, healing, power upon anyone. He wants us to make the choice. I praise God tonight you'll make the right choice. It's bowed and eyes closed. The right choice. Is bowed and eyes closed. And you are saying whatever other people say, whatever other people do, whatever, whatever other people choose, I choose life tonight. I choose salvation tonight. I choose forgiveness tonight. And I choose the goodness of God for my life tonight. And wherever you are on this final day of days, Accra GCK. The Lord is saying, make that deal with him. And look away from the past. Look away from how guilty you feel. Just choose Christ and his salvation. If you're choosing Christ, if you're choosing forgiveness, if you're choosing freedom, if you're choosing the grace of God, if you're choosing life in Christ, wherever you are now, just raise up that hand, I make my choice. I make my choice. The choice of life eternal. The choice of the grace of God that forgives and cleanses from all sin. I make my choice. Raise up that hand. I choose God. I choose grace. I choose salvation. I choose forgiveness. Raise up that hand. And as you are raising up the hand, you are not ashamed of Christ. Publicly, privately, you have the grace of God available for you. As you are raising up your hand, you can stand up. I have made my choice. I have chosen life. I have chosen forgiveness. And the moment you choose, it's yours. 
the moment you choose that salvation it comes raise up your hand and stand up to my right to my left to my center at the back anywhere you're hearing the sound of my voice now make a wise choice and stand up on the radio make your choice over the television make your choice online anywhere everywhere you are make your choice right now i have chosen life we're going to pray together now father we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your love we thank you for your compassion that even though we have sinned and gone astray you are waiting for us you are, you are saying all the past will be blotted out if we just make the right choice of Christ our Savior tonight Lord, all these who are raising their hands, all these who are standing here and everywhere, they have made the right choice. They have made the choice of life in Christ. According to your promise, which cannot fail, grant them forgiveness now in Jesus' name. Let him hear your amen. amen. Grant them the freedom now in Jesus' name. Amen. Grant them that salvation real now in Jesus' name. Amen. And let the joy of salvation come to every heart. A new life come to everyone. And Lord, let your beauty, the beauty of Jesus be seen in their lives now, in Jesus' name. All oh, your wondrous compassion and purity, grant unto them now, in Jesus' name. Spirit divine, refine every nature of the people even now in Jesus name as they have made the choice and you have granted the choice may the light of their life shine until everyone around can see the beauty of Jesus in them Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God, it is done. We call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us during this time of counseling. And then after that, we'll make the choice of healing. And whatever choice we make is going to answer as we pray for everyone. Your prayer is answered. Your confession has been your confession has been accepted by the Lord. Please, we want the counselors to go to the people, give them the cars, assist them to feel, and make sure that they put down the right name and the particulars. Please, all the workers, the choristers, please get up and go to the people. Give them cars and help them to fill, please. The choristers should join, please. Please, the counselors should approach them, get to them, and make sure that right particulars are taken. Thank you. 
You have made the greatest decision of life. And it is our duty to ensure that they continue in that decision all the days of their life. Place the choristers, get up, go to the people and assist to fill the forms. The counselors, get to them, make sure that the right particulars are taken. The regional overseers also should be around to give proper direction to the people. It's very, very important that we do it in the right way. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link, gckhq.org, stroke connect. Below your player, click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ and your name, send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS. Or what's up to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Let's be fast. Let's be fast. So we write the names of all the people who have decided for the Lord. Also, there is going to be a convert rally. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 30th April, 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Thanks. The Ghana Believers Banquet on Sunday, 30th April, 2023, at all Deeper Life Bible Church locations across the country. The time is 2 p.m. Yansen Kabwe Son, say Deeper Life Asafo, my nina no, upon two ACM with dear, a homony Christo Benya, a woman. All those around the Alpha location, you'll be here at that time and be in the pavilion on my left. All those around. around. And we want the counselors, the workers to ensure and they are not going to wait till Sunday before you look for them. Right after this crusade this night, you do proper follow-up on them, you pray for them, and you make sure that on that day, they will be present at their various places for the banquet. Please, if you are through, you can signify for me to see. The counselors, if you are through, let's know. All over. Take proper particulars of the converse, 
in the Alpha location here and also all over the globe, wherever people have decided for the Lord, you are precious in the sight of God. The counselors, we are waiting for you to make us to know whether you are true. Write your correct name, the place you are living. If there is any popular thing, maybe a church building, or anything popular that will make the people to locate you, put it down. Yes, the counselors. Okay. Then let's stand up and wait for sorry, sorry. our convener as he comes to pray for your healing, your deliverance, and all the blessings we are expecting the Lord to do for you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Your choice. Whatever you choose, you get tonight in Jesus' name. I just heal him. Say it now. I just health. I choose deliverance. I choose dominion. I choose the power of God. And that power of God will come in Jesus' name. I choose miracle. Say it, say it, say it. You see, it's God himself that said, he invited us. That we should, we should choose life. And whatever we choose, he will confirm. On this final day of this six day crusade, we're not going to choose life for today and choose life till the end of our lives. Yeah. Healing today, health for the rest of our lives. Deliverance today and dominion for the rest of our lives. What you choose, you have. What you ask, you receive. What you mention, that will happen. It's up the hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Heavenly Father, we thank you. How gracious, how great you are. How glorious, how mighty you are. That you have left the choice in our hand. You have not predestined or to sickness or to infirmity or to weakness or to any debilitating disease. You have healing for everyone. Health for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Dominion for everyone. Happiness and joy for everyone. You have told us to choose. We are making our choice now. Lord, everybody chooses healing. Grant them the healing. Send forth the healing to everyone now. In Jesus' name. 
everybody chooses deliverance send that deliverance to everyone now in jesus name everyone chooses miracle and i pray that miracle they have chosen send it for to them in jesus name madness there's no chance for you to be there anymore come out in jesus name blindness there's no chance for you to be there anymore be healed in jesus name And we're praying deafness and dumbness, no chance to remain there on that boy, on that child, on that man, on that woman. Let your ears be open now and your tongue speak out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Broken bones, be mended, joined together right now in Jesus' name. And we're asking for those who are lame, those who are paralyzed, those who have any part of their body missing, and they choose total wholeness, heal them in Jesus' name. Every internal disease, every internal sickness, I command you now, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, make this day a great day of miracles for everyone. Amen. Glorious day of miracle for everyone. Amen. Right now, let there be great, great healing, deliverance, miracle everywhere. Here at the Alpha location, online, over the radio, over the television. Great, unforgettable miracle, healing, deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We we'll praise your name. We we'll glorify you. We we'll make a choice, and that choice is confirmed. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. A natural of a safe place.